how are you all doing? We are so excited to have your face in this virtual space. My name is Tiedra Knox, and I currently have on a pink dress, locks, pink lipstick, a little shadow going on. Um, but I'm super excited to be with you all today. I want to set, have, give you all some reminders. So Monday, Monday, Monday is going to be a good day because that's when you are going to get the survey. I'm going to remind you all of these things after um, we finish today's session as well. But I want to start with these reminders. Um, after my session, there is a lounge. So go and check out the lounge and then we'll have two other sessions. One is asking for forgiveness, not permission. You could probably catch me there next. And then um, it'll be bespoke finances. So I just want to set the stage on what's to come. And then we're going to get into um, today's session of dismantling the dysfunction within feedback. I have a few questions for y'all and y'all let me know in the chat or just using your emojis. How many of you have ever received feedback based on someone else's personal preference? Okay, I'm getting a yes. How many of you have ever received feedback based on someone else's position or in comparison to someone else's position rather than your actual performance? Okay, okay. How many of you have ever received feedback based on your actual tasks and responsibilities? Yeah, yeah, okay. So I want to introduce you all to the four P's of purposeful feedback. It was developed from my personal experience of giving and receiving effective and ineffective feedback. Successful feedback has allowed me to grow by leaps and bounds, but with ineffective feedback, I found that it wasn't useful. I found myself doubting my skills and I found myself feeling like an imposter. What I have noticed with people that give ineffective feedback, one, they are not equipped or informed to give me feedback, number one. Two, they don't know that their feedback is ineffective or they fall on the other end of the totem pole where their motives is rooted in their desires to create minimies and not advance the mission and vision of the organization. So our goal for this session is to revolutionize how we give and receive feedback. It's a tried and true methodology and the goal is to improve communication and ultimately drive progress. Now, what sets this framework apart from any others is that it doesn't allow either party off the hook. You're not just going to be able to give the feedback and leave the recipient hanging. Like you got to be a partner with them in this thing. So I'm excited to talk to you all about what this means, how to incorporate it, how to implement it. We're going to start with defining feedback. It's information about reactions to a product, person's performance of a task, which is used for a basis of improvement. And I'm adding emphasis for that because a lot of times I receive feedback, it wasn't used for basis of improvement. As I stated earlier, it was used because of people desires to create many needs. Feedback can come from a peer, come from a customer. It could come from a supervisor. It could come from you. Like you're giving feedback maybe to your boss. You may be in that position as well. There are different types of feedback. We have formal, informal, formative, summative, and constructive. We're going to get into it because I'm ready to, I'm ready to go. So if you all have been the sender or the receiver of the feedback that I'm about to describe, I want you to type yep in the chat. And I already saw somebody put yep in the chat already. So we're going to start with formal, carefully organized, and incorporated into the process. Typically connected with an assessment, task, or competencies, or even a standard achievement. It's documented for both the sender and the receiver for evidence. Because you know what? You have to keep your receipt keeping receipts is very important. I got my yips. Then we have informal. 
Informal can occur at any time, at any moment, or doing any specific actions. Now, in order for it to be effective, we must have some type of report that's built with the person that we're giving the feedback to. Now, it could happen in any modality, in person, over the phone, online form, or even if we're doing a virtual learning environment. Then we have the formative feedback. Now, the purpose of formative feedback is to evaluate the learning and provide continuous feedback that instructors and students may utilize to improve both the teaching and the learning. So it's best delivered early on in the course before the summative, which we will get into next. Formative feedback, it assists the learners in improving and avoiding making mistakes over again some circumstances, this feedback is necessary before your student could feel like they're capable of even progressing forward. Then we have summative. Now, the summative, it measures the learning at the end. It measures the learning at the end. I'm seeing all the yips. I'm seeing all the yips. Thank y'all for your participation. So our summative, it measures performance at the end, and sometimes we may be comparing it to a norm or benchmark and things like that. Now, it is best used when we include specific or extensive comments, a clear explanation on how the work could be improved. Now, this next one I'm about to list, this, the, this next one I'm about to say, we all have heard this one. I want to give you some constructive feedback. Now, the chat should just be on fire because we all then had the constructive feedback. In my research, I discovered constructive feedback is supposed to be specific. It's supposed to be issue focused and it's supposed to be observation based. Observation based. And the people that have given me constructive feedback, it wasn't based on one of those or none of those. Has that ever happened to anybody? Or is it just me? Okay. Okay. So now constructive feedback, it comes in four different ways. You have negative feedback. Now that consists of corrective remarks about past behavior. Constructive. I'm laughing at the chat like y'all going in. I'm so here for it. Now negative feedback, it focuses on unsuccessful behavior that should not be repeated. Then you have positive feedback. Now with the positive feedback, these are comments that confirm previous behavior, things that should be sustained. Then you have negative feed forward. I didn't even know this one existed because you know they don't the books don't teach you this. You gotta learn this yourself. Now this consists of remedial marks about future performance, and the emphasis on future behavior that should be avoided. Positive feed forward consists of Affirming comments is concerning the future, concentrated on future performing enhancing behavior. Have y'all heard of any of those under constructive feedback? I just heard of constructive feedback. I never known it was breaking down like that. Okay, we all learning something new. Amen. Now, I want to make a point that depending on your function, depending on your industry, you will be required to have the formative, the summative, that, that just vary based off industry and formative. We all play a role in making sure that we give informal feedback. The thing that I want to make clear when we're giving informal feedback, just don't lay it out there. Don't lay it out there and then leave some per someone with it. Like really give them the steps that they can take to grow and progress and develop into all that they are created to be. Can we agree to do that? Okay. So these are some of my favorite types of feedback. They have enabled me to acquire assignments that are in line with the work that I enjoy doing the most, work that is meaningful, work that has allowed me to span my resume. These types of feedback that I'm about to list have allowed me to enhance my impact, my influence, and my income. These are more in alignment with the 4P, 4P framework that I'm going to mention to you all. Now, we're going to switch it up a little. If you have been the recipient or the sender of these types of feedback, 
I want you to use an emoji or use your gifts to describe how did you feel when you received this type of feedback. We're going to start with appreciation. Leaders who give appreciation feedback show how they value how a worker performs. Hard work doesn't go unnoticed. Has anyone recently completed a hard project at work lately? Yes. Okay, so I want to thank you for completing that hard project at work. I want to thank you for showing up and giving that job or whoever was the benefactor of your work, of your intellect, of your time, of your skill set. I want to thank you for pouring into them. And I want to say that I appreciate you for doing that. I, I don't have to know the impact. I don't have to be a part of the impact to be able to say that you made an impact. So I want to I want to tell you I appreciate you for giving them your skill set and lending that skill set over. Has anyone reached a hard deadline lately? I heard 2023 spring semester. Hey, you did that. You did that. And I want you to take some time to rest. Okay. Be sure rest is on your schedule. Now, when it comes to appreciation feedback, it could be as simple as acknowledging someone for reaching a hard deadline, or you can go into detail or how they put in a lot of work on a project. It works best with specifics. Now, next we have guidance feedback. Now, leaders can use guidance feedback not only to praise, but to also advise. This type of feedback, when you partner with positive feedback, it can provide a mild reprimand. You don't have to be strong, you don't have to be condescending, and you don't have to be rude. It can take on the form of ideas improvement. So people will really look at the receiver of your feedback. They'll look at that feedback and be like, how can I improve on this? How can I take it up a notch? How can I go higher? And it's not an indirect way and it's not a fake way because it allows the recipient of our feedback to ask clarifying questions. Encouragement. Like the other forms, this is a fantastic approach to increase morale. If you are in an environment where morale is low, I want to encourage you that you won't be there for the rest of your life. You could, you could switch it up at any moment now. And I want to encourage you that by your presence being there, by your skill set being there, you are making an impact. You are changing. You're changing others and people see you. People see you, people acknowledge you, and they will affirm you. Either they will affirm you voluntarily or they will affirm you involuntarily when you leave and create a void. If you are someone that's struggling, I also want to encourage you because when I start when I started this section, I said, you know, assignments that's in alignment with the work that I enjoy. It allowed me to increase my impact, my influence, and my income. That wasn't always the case. So I know what it's like to need encouragement because I'm working in an environment they don't see me, they don't affirm me, they don't appreciate me. So I want you to know that I see you if you're struggling. I affirm you if you're struggling. And if you're in a place where you feel like you're in your own house and you're working from home and it's still a struggle to show up on the screen, take some time to just know that it won't last always. Take some time to fill your cup up. And also remember to use your PTO. If you are venturing into a new environment, Congratulations. If you are venturing into a new environment, congratulations. You got this and you were created for such a time as this. Don't back down. Don't feel like an imposter. Go forth and proceed with confidence. Don't hold back. Next, we have forward feedback. We have forward feedback. When it comes to forward feedback, I want you all to know mistakes happen. I'm one, I'm always making mistakes. The thing is, I always own my mistakes and I don't allow my mistakes to define me. 
forward feedback is focused on the future rather than on people's mistakes. Not to say that as leaders, we condone mistakes because we're not condoning mistakes, but we recognize that dwelling on the past does very little to help someone as they're trying to learn, as they're trying to grow, and as they're trying to develop. If anything, it can make them feeling it can make them feel worse and it can undermine their confidence. People need context. So they need to know the why behind corporate strategies and how they play a role into advancing those corporate strategies. When we do forward feedback, when we execute forward feedback, we're cultivating behaviors that assist people in reaching higher heights. Last, but definitely not least, this is probably one of my favorite ones. This is coaching feedback. Now, when we're doing coaching feedback, the leader act as a coach. The leader will act as a coach. So you're devising winning strategies to assist others in understanding their place on the team. Now, I'm not I'm not super excited about the coaching feedback because I have athletic ability. Actually, I don't. I don't play sports, never play sports. The only the only thing I can use my feet for is do a dance. I do a line dance in a minute, but don't put me on nobody's team to play no sports because I'm I'm not going to help you win. But if you're talking about winning in life, I got you. I got you. So when it comes to the coaching feedback, you're helping others win. You helping them win in life. You helping them and not just any area of life, but all areas of life because certain principles or most principles are transferable. Most principles are transferable. So if I'm helping you at work, I have I have an intern right now, and I'm talking to this intern, and I'm like, so how does the work we doing connect into the mission? How is this connecting to your overall role outside out outside of this? How is this connecting to your degree plan? Because I don't want your internship to just be another internship. I want you to have impact, influence, to be able to advocate for your income. When coaching feedback happens. It could be much more regularly than the others. And that just depends on your learning style, depends on your cadence, depends on time and availability and things like that. But thank you all for vibing with me as we went through those different types of feedback. I hope, it is my hope that you felt encouraged, appreciated, and now you're ready to move forward. Okay. Now let's get into what effective feedback seeks to do. It seeks to serve is selfless and it's tied to something bigger than yourself. It's not about personal preference. It's about increasing the mission and vision of the company and not multiplying enemies. Different doesn't mean diminished. Different is distinguished. And just because the way that I do it is different, it doesn't mean that my work or my value is diminished. Effective feedback, it seeks to build others up and it doesn't shame them and it doesn't allow them to feel like what you're saying is very condescending. The goal is seeking to serve, not serving to seek personal gain. And helping them, you stepping on them to, to, to have some type of success in corporate in corporate spaces. We don't need to step on people. We don't need to step on people. We don't need to do that. Timing allows both parties to prepare their temperament, which is how every, which is how they're going to react to the circumstances around them. And the tone is the level in which you convey your feedback and the receiver receives your feedback. If any of these are off. If your timing is off, if your temperament is off, if the tone is off on both the receiver and the sender, you run the risk of somebody in that room becoming unresponsive, shutting down, or they're going to turn up on you. It's story time. I couldn't wait. This is one of my favorite parts of the presentation. So I work as a retail environment and I was a trainer at this, I, would, I wasn't a trainer, I was a sales manager trainee. 
at this specific retail environment. So I went through the internship one year, did a good job, went to the internship another uh, that next year. And then that next year, I was a trainee. And the interns had one presentation at the end of their internship. The trainee had two presentations. So our midpoint, the trainee's midpoint was basically at the end of the intern's internship. And then the second presentation was maybe eight months later on down the line because the training program was much more longer than the internship. So we're about two to three weeks out from me receiving the feedback from my presentation. So I'm checking with my manager. He's always busy. He's always on the floor. A lot of stuff going on. I'm like, okay, I get it because now we're running into back to school season. And it's a very busy season for a lot of retail environments. So one day I walk up to him and I say, is it a good time for us to meet? He said, not right now. I do this. I ask him that same question throughout the day in each department. So we started in men. It was women. It was children. It was a home in every department that's in a retail store. I He was, I followed him to that department. I found him in the department. I asked him the question and he told me no. I said, okay. So at the end of the day, he had a routine. Around four o'clock, that's when he winding down. So he'll go through the men's department. And once you pass the men's, this big entrance, it was one of our main entrances. On the right side of the entrance was the restroom. On the left side of the entrance, it was the salon. So while he went to the left, I ain't following no man into no bathroom. I'm not doing it. So while he went to the restroom and handled his business, I went to the salon. And when he came out, I met him. We met in the middle. And I said, is it a good time for us to meet? And he said, we'll meet tomorrow. So when it came to the timing, it was going to be tomorrow. I had been asking him, is is it a good time to meet? All day, all day long. So tomorrow comes. When tomorrow comes, I'll be on my own. Tomorrow came and we're meeting in his office. And he asked me, what did I think about my presentation? And because I'm confident in me and obviously I know I'm good at my job because they wouldn't have hired me on as an intern twice and then hired me as a trainer. I tell him, I feel like I did an amazing job. And he tells me that my presentation was extremely underwhelming in comparison to the interns. So I'm being compared to people that's below me. Okay. Then he says, well, what is it it that you want to do with your career? I say, well, I would really like to get into HR. And he said, well, it's going to take you 10 years to get into HR because our newly promoted HR manager, he started at this time and it's been 10 years and now he's here. So now I'm being compared to people above me. Then, y'all, the story, it gets good. Then he proceeds to tell me the department that you're over, which this is a shocker and this is where temperament comes in at because the whole time he's he's very monotone, he's very cool. His temperament is good, but my temperament is all over the place because I already feel shame. I already feel like I'm not performing t- compared to the people below me or the people above me. And I don't even know the people that's on my level. I don't, I don't know what I, what's going on here. So then he tells me the department that I am over is failing and it's in the red and it's in the bottom of it's the bottom of the district. And I'm very surprised by that because I didn't even know I was over a department. So I'm really shocked here. And then he proceeds to tell me what I did yesterday was actually great initiative. So by me following him around in the store, he called that initiative. That's what he called initiative. So at this time, the tears are coming. This is what this is what became the cherry on top for me. He said, and I don't know how much longer you're going to be here. And at that point, I am like the ugly cry where you're snotting and crying and you're hyperventilating. That cry that you have when your mama tell you, shut up before I give you something to cry for. And you can't and you can't like you cannot control yourself. I was at that point. We basically had to shut the meeting down. And I 
it was so much within that because I didn't advocate on the fact that I had another presentation to do. I didn't advocate on the fact that I knew the work that I was doing was in, important. I, I I took it all. I took everything, although I knew that was wrong as well. So I want to tell y'all how the story all wraps up. It didn't take me 10 years to get into HR. It took me two. Um, they actually moved him to another store because when I researched all everything about the store, the whole store was in the red. The whole store was failing. We were the worst store in the district. So it wasn't just me. It was his leadership and, er and everybody else. The whole store was failing. I also found out that the people that was under him but above me, those people were actually in talks about receiving severance packages. And then we receive a new manager and this new manager tells me, she was just real. She said, you were not trained properly. The leaders are not going to give me another year to actually train you to the level that you need to be trained. And she said, I could put you in another department. If I put you in that department and you accept the offer for that department, you would take a $10 pay cut. And I told her my 10, my, none of my bills took a $10 pay cut. And my other option was to get on a performance improvement plan. And people had already told me, like, whatever you do, don't get on that. So I took three days off. I took three days off. And the, the first two days, I read a book, finished the book. That third day, I wrote my letter of resignation. So when I came back to work on that fourth day, I had my letter of resignation. I put it on her desk. And she wasn't in the store. I come, come to find out she was off that day. So I called her and I said, hey, I made my decision. And she was like, oh, my God, I'm so glad to hear, hear from you. What's your decision? And I say, well, um, I'm going to give you a nine day resignation. And she was like, nine days. I say, yeah, that's actually that's that's next Friday because the 10. Remember, it's a retail environment. So we're open all week. We open all days of the week. So that 10th day would have been me working on a Saturday and I closed that Saturday from two to 10. I'm not working my last day in closing. I'm not doing that. So I'm going to give you the nine days. And she asked me, what is it that you're going to do next? I said, I'm actually going to grad school in Malibu, California to get my master's in human resources. And she says, I didn't know you were going. I said, yeah, nobody knew. I was planning to leave in August, but since it's June and all of this is going on, I'll just do it now. I have way much, I have way more saved up. So I'm good. Thank you all for the opportunity. I really appreciate it. I'll let you tell the team when you feel like it's convenient for you and when you're here. So after that, I go finish my shift and I, I'm married. I am good. When it's when when it comes to effective feedback. It allows for ongoing development. And when I, as I'm telling you all this story, nobody checked in for ongoing development with me. The people that recruited me, the people that were training me, all of them, they worked at corporate. They had already dipped out. So I'm left in a chaotic environment and with a manager that's very incompetent in not training and developing people. Effective feedback is not just a one and done. You're a, you're a partner. You're a partner. You're helping somebody really reach their purpose and pursue purpose. So I'm passionate about this thing because I didn't live through it. So I want us to get into our four P's. I've been talking about them. I've been hitting them by them. Now it's time for us to really get into them. So you have your purpose, your people, your process, your performance. Your purpose, your people, your process, your performance. Your purpose. This is the why. Why are we why are we here? How does this affect me? How does this even affect the business? The people who is impacted by this feedback. And not just who is who is impacted, but how how can we customize it for them? We are not we are not the same. We are not the same. So I don't want you to give me cookie cutter feedback. I want you to give me something something that's customized to my personality, something that's customized to my purpose. Um, the process. What's the procedure? What's going to get us from point A to point B? What's going to do that? 
And then the performance. How is success defined and how is it measured? How, how do we grow and change? I do want to make the point that your purpose and your people, you could flip those. Depending on your personality and what works for you, you can flip those. So when it comes to purpose, I'm very passionate about the topic of purpose. I feel like when you are in alignment with your assignment, you don't need to compete, compare, or compromise your calling or who you were created to be, and you enjoy the work that you do. A lot of times I feel like when people are in roles and they're just giving ineffective feedback or feedback that's not helpful, it could be. It could be that they're in unfulfilling roles and their identity has become their role. Their identity is now this. And now they acting like they the founder of the company and they just started the company and they're harboring material that you need to do your job. So I'm very passionate about that. When it comes to the purpose, you want the purpose to align. You want it to align to the the business you wanted to align to the career goals and you wanted to align to the development needs now it could be one of these and it, it could be all of these my manager at my previous job did an amazing she always did this she always did this always and i loved it so she would align the goal whatever the goal was to the business needs so our business needs it really was training new production assistants. We're trying to train new production assistants. I worked on a, um, I worked for a mortgage organization. So we needed to train new production assistants because the mortgage company was going crazy and we needed people to support our loan officers. So our loan officers could actually focus on making more money for the company. Now, my career goals at that time was to become a senior training specialist. So in order for me to become that senior training specialist, the business, the business, they needed more of the production assistance. That also meant I needed to learn the training environment and I needed to run the class from beginning to end, forward and backwards. I needed to become that main person to run that class. And that was the development needs. So when we started working on that, when we started realizing we needed more training assistance, right? So that was the business needs. My development needs is learning the training environment and how to run this class from start to finish, forward and backwards to my career goals. It all aligned. And when that aligns, people can buy into the mission. They could buy into the purpose and they're much more willing to get it done and to do it right. And I've as a result of me literally living this out, I literally became, when we did a merger and acquisition, I became the co-lead trainer for not just bringing on new production assistants, but loan consultants. So I had to teach loan consultants how to use our system as they migrated from their system. So I went from not just running this class, but becoming the co-lead as we are migrating companies together. Now, what I know somebody somebody in the audience probably asked me, did you ever get the senior training and development specialist role? No, girl, I ain't even applied for the role because then they started having layoffs and I dipped out. Okay, so let's get to our people. The people, these are the internal, external individuals who may be impacted by the business career goals, or even the development. We must examine who will be, that's the future, who currently are, or who have previously been uh, impacted. So we need to identify who these who these people are. Carrie, I'm going a, I'm to a get to that. I need to get to that. The process. These are intentional steps both parties should take to reach the desired goal. This is what takes the partnership to the next level because you're getting in there with them and you're developing a plan. You're de generating ideas. You break those ideas down into actionable steps and you align them with what the people are currently doing. And then you have a deadline to get it done. So what steps would you take to develop a partnership with those that you're giving feedback to.
Y'all could put it in the chat, but I'm gonna be looking for answers. And the last part is our performance. This is evaluating the process. This is evaluating the process. We are giving feedback for someone to improve in some area of their life. If we are not committed to the development of others, if we're not committed to developing them, if we're not willing to really be partners with them, then we have to look at the motives of the feedback and why we're giving it. Is it based on our personal preference? Is it because we want to create many needs? Is it because it's not done the way that we think it should, done, should get done? And if time is not your thing, and we're all busy, like learning and development, it's a lot going on in this space. If time is not your thing, have we thought about bringing in, you know, a, another partner, a partner within a business to help develop them? Have we thought about bringing in maybe a coach? Have we thought about, you know, creating a buddy system to help with that? This process is for people who really want to be a partner in that thing. I respect the managers I respect the most are the ones that get in the dirt with me. I'm from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I always say I'm Dallas paid, Louisiana raised. And Kevin Gates has a song that say, I get it out the mud. Yeah, yeah. I want people to be in the mud with me. I respect you way more when you give me feedback, but you walk me through how to do it. And I ain't saying you got to hold my hand. I just need you to be, hey, is this right? But don't, don't give me, don't throw it out. And then you want to be hands off. No, you didn't, you, you, didn't, you didn't put your mouth on me. You didn't really said something. So let's talk about it. Are you really about what you be, are you about what you say you be talking about? That's a boosted song. Okay, so now we're going to practice, y'all. We're going to practice. We're going to practice. I want y'all to meet my friend Jim. And based on our purpose, our people, our process, and performance, how would you give feedback based on his blind spot? And I know somebody is probably going to be like, well, is this gym first time or second time interrupting people? Let's just assume that this is Jim's first. This is our first time having this conversation with Jim. It's our first time. So let's just assume. Let's just assume this is our first time. You know, how would you how would you give him feedback? think y'all have the capability to come off the mic i'm not sure i think so though so i'm going to be honest with y'all i'm gonna tell y'all um with no he doesn't do it with clients it's just with the team members so my answer the core of my answer would be the same just how I present it will be different based off if this is like if me and Jim already have a relationship, I'm going to keep it one 100 with Jim. And I'm going to be like, look, you're doing a good job. The client is, you know, really pleased. But your team members, they, they, they're a little sick of you. Like what you're doing is not creating a co cohesive work environment at all. Now, if this is my first time meeting with Jim. I'll be like, we appreciate, you know, the value that you're adding. Like the skills is just amazing on this specific project. Um, I scheduled this time for us to meet because we need to discuss some areas of improvement. You know, the way we interact with one another. When the team seeks to share their ideas, we notice that you're interrupting them. Are, are you aware of this? Oh, I like this one. I want to talk to you about something though. Are you are you all right when someone cuts you off when you're talking? I like that one. I would adjust the group and remind all that everyone's views. Yeah. Yeah. So depending on your proximity, it it could it could change. I want y'all to meet my friend Tasia. And the question that, that's on the floor with 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 Tasia is the developmental opportunities, her developmental opportunities. Are they based on the overall purpose? Or they 
based on personal preference. And I get that this was a panel. I get that it was a panel, but um, that whole refined professional appearance and less bold makeup and lipstick, <laughs> I just thought that was a bit much to put in someone's feedback. What y'all thinking with Tasia? Let me know in the chat. And then I want us to implement the four Ps. That's going to be my charge for all of us to implement the four Ps. And what does that look like? Never all right with it, but as an individual, I think I had the floor. I appreciate your input, and I'd like to return what I was saying, please. I like that. We need to copy and paste that and make that a template, girl. I love that. Okay, so this is a sample of us implementing the four Ps. The goal, intention of this feedback is to help you link your career ambitions of becoming a training manager with the business needs of reducing our time to fill purpose. The training plan you develop for our recruiters, people, highlights the measures we can take to achieve the goal. It does lack interactive and interactive activities and leaders, people to collaborate with to ensure the learning is utilized. I'd like for us to talk about potential steps we can take to make this training a success. Process partnership right there. Creating a training plan is not an easy task. Once completed, though, we'll collaborate, process partnership to ensure that all the kinks are eyed out and submitted to leaders to ensure that it's in sync with what the business requires. Performance. What do y'all think about that? Okay, I'm getting a, I'm getting a thumbs up. I'm getting a thumbs up. I love that. I love that. Okay, so I have like three minutes left. I want to do reminders really fast. Um, Monday, you all will, will be receiving a survey. Please, please, please fill out the survey. We want to be sure that we're creating great learning experiences like the Learning Exchange. After this is the lounge. So um, check out the lounge. Um, also, you have two sessions after mine, asking for forgiveness, not permission, and bespoke finances. I want to also thank you all. I want to thank you all. I, I am going to ask questions, but I want to thank you all for your participation. I want to thank you all for showing up. I want to thank you all for investing this time in yourself. Um, I want to just thank you all for being you. It's because of you that organizations are better. It's because of you that organizations get all of your creativity, right? So I just want to thank you all for showing up. I'm going through the chat to check out any, any, um, any questions someone may have. I saw a comment with Carrie about not being in, in alignment. And I'm trying to find that comment. But Carrie, we could, that's something we could definitely talk about as it relates to being in alignment, making sure that you are in alignment. And when you realize that alignment, like your overall life alignment is much more important than just this, 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 and this, then it may be time for an exit. And that gap in between you realizing that it's time for an exit. And when that exit happens, that's one of the hardest places to be. So if you are there, if you like are in that, in that space, I want to not just encourage you, but I want you to like level yourself up because what will be on the other side of that is nothing but greatness and a roller coaster ride. And I'm not speaking hypothetically, I'm speaking from something that I actually experienced. Um, something that I've, I've actually experienced and it's been, it's been up ever since. So I've been in that place where the alignment wasn't there and now I'm in full, completely alignment, but that gap, it seemed like it was forever. 
So if you are in a gap, I definitely want to encourage you. I want to encourage you to continuously equip yourself. Take time to rest. Take time to journal this journey. Because when you look back on it, you're going to be like, man, okay, it's, it's, it's here. It's here. It's here. Um, we don't have any questions in the chat. I want, okay, how do you, oh, I see. How do you explain, oh, how do you explain when you get unhelpful feedback, like feeding back on feedback from seniors? So basically you're trying to, so basically when the feedback isn't, isn't helpful. How do we explain? Yeah, journal your journey. Um, when you realize that your feedback is it wasn't helpful, take the time to like process it, like because I think processing is very very important, and do a follow up. Do do a follow up, and I I think it's very important. I'm at a place in my career to where I ask people, you know, do you want me to keep it corporate or you want me to keep it 100? And that's how I set the stage. Because if you want me to keep it corporate, I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you an answer, and it's gonna be wrapped in a pretty bow. But if you want me to be a hundred, I'm gonna just be like, yeah, that was not helpful. So um, you can still let if you want, like depending on your relationship with that person. Like, hey, I had some time to think about the feedback that you gave me, and I was trying to implement it, and it just wasn't, you know, I didn't. Find it, find it helpful. Helpful. Can you help me understand how this is supposed to work? But, and you could try that. Typically, I, I, I'm just at the point where my manager, my manager now, and my manager that I had last time, I'm just like, yeah, the feedback that he gave was just not helpful or useful. Like, I'll tell my manager it wasn't helpful, and I'm like, I don't, I don't really want to talk to them about that no more. I'm good. And my manager would basically go move mountains for me to make sure I don't have to deal with that. But I do understand that's not everybody's experience. So if you find that it's not helpful, take some time to process it and then do a follow up and let them know that, hey, I didn't really it didn't really work out the way that I thought it would work out. Let how what what are your thoughts about it? Put it back on them or um feedback is feedback right so people will give it it doesn't mean that you actually have 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 to take it you know it's like an opinion like that quote what they say with, with opinions it's like a you know what everybody i want because mm -hmm. what worked for you may not work for me and depending on that depending on um equity depending on race depending on all the other variables yeah that probably could work for you but how's that actually working for me let me see tough to truth tough truth or dress up yeah which one do you want to move for okay so y'all, thank y'all again. Please do not forget your survey on top of your survey. Um, please go check out the lounge. And then the next two sessions, ask for forgiveness, not permission, and bespoke finances. I love y'all. Thank y'all again. It was such a pleasure. And I'll be connecting with y'all later. Bye.